Welcome back to Harbaugh. President Bush lived up to his word today, vetoing a children's health insurance bill that would increase health coverage for poor children to families making up to three times the poverty level or about $60,000 a year and up to $80,000 a year in income in some states like New York. The president says it's a case of creeping national health care. I happen to believe that what you're seeing when you expand eligibility for federal programs is the desire by some in Washington, D.C. to federalize health care. I don't think that's good for the country. I believe in private medicine. I believe in helping poor people, which was the intent of S-CHIP now being expanded beyond its initial intent. Democrats try, will try to override the veto later this month. So the hardball debate tonight, it's a hot one and right on time. Is the president right in vetoing this children's health care bill? Rachel Maddow is a talk show host on Air America Radio. And Pat Buchanan is an MSNBC political analyst. Rachel, why should the president not veto this bill? He shouldn't veto this bill on policy because this is one of the most phenomenally successful health care programs we've ever had in this country. Expanding it would go it would go halfway toward getting rid of all uninsured kids in this country. In political terms, he shouldn't veto it because it's going to it's the wrong thing to saddle Republicans with who are going to be running for reelection next year uh, on the grounds that they're against health insurance for kids. It's a wrong political move. Pat Buchanan, the politics and the policy. What's what's good about the veto? Well, let's talk about the politics of it, Chris. Look, uh, the Republican Party is supposed to be a party that's against socialized medicine. You've got a doubling of the size of an entitlement program by the federal government, takes it from 25 to $60 billion, doubles the number of kids almost under it. This is creeping socialism. More than that, Chris, this country is headed down the road to a massive collision with these entitlement programs, Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, which we can't afford. This country cannot be now expanding entitlement programs. Everybody that's looked at these programs knows that can't happen. What do you make, Rachel, of the moving up of the ceiling of eligibility to 80000 a year in some states? I think that makes it takes account of what the reality is for families and the cost of living and the price of health care. Listen, if, if we were playing fantasy politics instead of fantasy baseball, this, this, this bill would win the World Series. This is a bill that expands private health insurance for poor kids and pays for it by raising the cigarette tax. Like, you can't make this a prettier bill unless you added puppies to it or something. I mean, well, it, this does, is a, it does go up to three or four times the poverty level. Level, but, but you would call all that poverty. But you know, but you can't listen. You, this is about getting eight million kids who are uninsured in this country some sort of health care. This would get rid of half of the uninsured kids in the country and get well, them under the private health insurance minute, system. Wait a minute, Rachel. Yeah, we're not talking about whether they're going to be deprived of health care. We're talking about who should pay for the health care of folks making sixty and eighty thousand a year. But Pat, I eight think million they kids should. don't have health insurance I right think now. They should. Nobody's paying for but their the health care. Is not that they don't get cared, but who who is paying for these things? I don't think you ought to transfer the burden from folks uh, who are making sixty and eighty thousand a year should get something from people who are making more. Who is they paying? Pay right, for, who they is should paying pay for it themselves. Who is paying right now for the eight million kids who don't have health insurance? Their families kids. are paying themselves, or the, they get it okay. free. The, they get it free. Uh, That's what President Bush said. Oh, you can just go to the emergency room for treatment. That's let, not a health care system. Let me ask That's an a old, policy uh, failure. This is really about health care financing, not health care. Let me ask you, Rachel, uh, where are we going to get the extra $35 billion? Where's it going to come from? Cigarette tax. 61 but that's cent not been passed. The cigarette tax. But that hasn't been passed. That hasn't been That's what they're proposing to do to pay for but, it. But that's, a, well, I don't know, that's not part of this me. bill. Chris, There's no Chris. reason to believe that that will happen, is there? There's, that's what the Democrats are proposing to spend Proposing, it on. The Bush, but I'll gladly pay you on Tuesday for a hamburger today. Once again, they're borrowing money saying they'll someday pay for it. Do you really no. believe a cigarette tax will be signed by this president? Well, An increase in the cigarette tax will be signed by George if Bush? If Bush didn't sign it, I would still be in favor of this bill. And I think 72% of Americans would still be well, in favor of it, too. About? So we're going to borrow the money George, from the Chinese. No, listen, gonna... no, listen, right now, listen. George Bush discovering fiscal conservatism on this issue would be like you telling me that Pat Buchanan just discovered multiculturalism right now. Now, it doesn't make any sense. This guy airlifted $12 billion in cash right. into Iraq in shrimp ra shrink wrapped bricks and right. didn't care when half of it walked off. But you I, can't look, discover Rachel, I think you got a valid now. point. You got a valid point that George Bush has not been an economizer, but I think it's good that he starts. But let's take that cigarette tax. Who do you think pays that tax? It's working class folks, it's African Americans, it's people who enjoy cigarettes. You hammer them constantly with taxes, sin taxes. These things go after people 
people who work for a living. This is outrageous that you're taking their money and paying for a benefit to people making 60 and 80 grand a year. Pat, you can yell about sin and you can yell about socialism and you can call this communist and you can do whatever you want. I think that people in this country are ready for something to be done about health care and they don't care what names you throw at you know, it. People I'm, want 8 million well, American kids. Well, that doesn't health health make insurance. it right because Boy. people want it and they may vote for it. On the merits, Rachel, do yeah. you believe that in a cigarette tax to pay for this? On the merits. I think that if a cigarette tax could pay for it, yes, I believe in that. But if it wasn't the cigarette tax, I would still be for it. This is what tax would you be for to pay for it? At this point, this is the if there's one thing that's going to be added to the deficit, I'd add this and I'd bring our troops home from Iraq to pay for it. But, How about but, that? Okay, well, you know, this is a marginal question. But He's correct. going to stay in that war. He ain't getting out of that war. Now, it's the question whether we do this health care bill but or Chris, not. Bush listen, ain't coming home the with health, the troops. The health care bill is $30 billion. <laughs> Bush is saying that that's absolutely unfindable, hey, Chris, unspendable. Okay, Chris, the other go ahead, Pat. The other sorry, night, Pat's our turn. colleague, uh, Tim Russert, Hit, the, hit all those Democratic candidates where they're going to cut or what taxes they're going to raise to save these gigantic Social Security programs. And here we are talking about increasing entitlement programs. But you guys are completely missing the forest for the trees. Come on, this president, this administration with a Republican-led Congress for the whole first part of his term turned the biggest surpluses in history into the biggest deficits in history. Now, all of a sudden, that, there can't be health care for poor kids because we're worried about the deficit. If you're going down the wrong road, Rachel, you don't keep going down it. I credit the president with at least standing up for, against the program, which you are right, is very, very popular. It took guts to do this. And when Republicans act with guts, I don't know whether that's politically smart, but it's about time they did the right thing. Now, the reason that he's standing up against this program is because this is a phenomenally successful program that is socialized medicine in the same way that Medicare is socialized medicine and Medicaid is socialized medicine in the sense that the government helps out in a market that's broken. That is incredibly dangerous to the Republican worldview that government can never help. So Why they've got to shut down it, this working program so they can continue well, to know, say I the government's the problem. This. You say the Republicans are voting or are stopping a program that would be good for them politically. Yeah. Isn't that what we elect people to do, to act on principle, even when it hurts them politically? For uh, heaven's sakes, Rachel, I agree with you. Look, it's, it's unpopular what the Republicans are doing, but if they'd done the unpopular thing again and again and again, this country would not be in the strategic fiscal mess it is in right now. Pat, the Republican health care plan right now, the proposal for fixing the health care disaster in this program, could be written on the back of an envelope in invisible ink and still nobody but would miss that's it. Because There's no want, Republican Rachel, proposal. The Democrats want, have come up with something here that would know, work. Rachel, your idea okay. is we got to have a national health care program and the Republicans aren't doing what's right, right because they're not going in your direction. They're not socialists, Rachel. <laughs> All I know is this, that I think that we need a national health care system and the Democrats we say they're a good for one. one but when it comes time to try to create one, they don't even have the guts to finance it. If we're going to have a 200000 or $200 billion health care program like Hillary and the others are talking about, you've got to be willing to finance it. And if all they're going to do is this chiseling number of saying, someday I'll pay this, raise the cigarette tax, that's not exactly a profile on courage, Rachel. It, Either you're going to pay for this stuff or stop talking about it. Hillary and Brock and Edwards are all talking about national health care. And all they can think of is some chiseling little cigarette tax they know they'll never pass. The I think it, why don't they put up their money where their mouth is and say, we're for national health and damn it, we're going to pay for it. We're going to cut something here. We're going to raise taxes here. It's going to add up. Why don't they say that? I think whatever they propose for paying this would pass. 72% of people in the All country right. want this program expended, extended. Look, because right now, the people who pay kidding, for it, the, right now, the people who pay for it are all of us who have private Rachel, insurance who are this, subsidizing the emergency rooms and the uh, kids who don't get health care. That's this veto, unconscionable. This veto is going to be sustained. Bush is going to win this fight. Okay, we'll see I you now. That's, that's a, that's a Bet we'll have to see if it's covered. Thank you, Pat Buchanan. Thank you, Rachel Meadow.